ST Engineering marked a watershed moment for Singapore's maritime forces on October 21, 2025, launching the Republic of Singapore Navy's first Victory-class multi-role combat vessel at its Benoit Yard. The ship, fittingly named Victory, entered the water on a date many naval communities commemorate as Trafalgar Day, historical echo of HMS Victory that underscores how symbolism and strategy sometimes intersect. Singapore's Defence Minister Chan Chun Singh officiated the ceremony, signalling both political backing and industrial confidence in a programme designed to redefine how a compact, high-tech fleet project's presence and power across crowded sea lanes. The launch is more than a christening of a new hull. Victory is the lead ship in a six-vessel class awarded to ST Engineering by the Ministry of Defence in 2023, a multi-year effort that pairs local industrial capacity with a concept of operations built around human machine teaming. At 150 meters long, the ship has been conceived from the keel up as a mothership for unmanned systems, integrating air, surface, and subsurface vehicles to extend reach, accelerate decision cycles, and keep sailors out of harm's way during the most hazardous tasks. In peacetime, that means broader surveillance and maritime security coverage using fewer people. In a crisis, it offers a resilient, distributed network of sensors and effectors that can absorb attrition while maintaining tempo. What sets the program apart is the rigor of its digital foundation. Before steel was cut, engineers exercised the design through 3D modeling, model-based engineering, and digital twins, validating layouts and maintainability in virtual space. That method minimizes costly mock-ups and reduces rework later in the build, shortens schedules, and cuts material waste, benefits that compound when the lessons of the first of class migrate to follow on hulls. The company positions this approach as a new benchmark for advanced naval shipbuilding in Singapore, a closed feedback loop in which design choices are tested early, factory workflows are tuned to those choices, and integration activity is sequenced with far fewer surprises. The industrial backdrop is equally important. ST Engineering is transforming its Benoit and Gould facilities into an integrated smart hub, investing in automated panel lines for faster, repeatable hull fabrication as well as robotic welding to tighten tolerances and boost quality. Smart yard management systems knit together schedules, parts, and people, while predictive maintenance helps critical machinery stay available when the line is at full stride. This is not just modern factory hygiene, it is a strategy to de-risk complex naval programs and create throughput for larger and more demanding projects that align with the armed forces' evolving maritime needs. With the ceremonial splash complete, Victory now transitions from Benoit Yard to Ghoul Yard for outfitting, combat system integration, and sea trials. Those phases will progressively activate the ship's mission systems and its control architecture for unmanned platforms, verifying that sensors, communications links, and effectors fuse into a coherent operational picture. Sea trials will probe everything from endurance and seakeeping to the choreography of launching, recovering, and commanding autonomous vehicles in varied conditions. The schedule envisions the Republic of Singapore Navy receiving ships from 2028 onward, in a phased cadence that allows training pipelines, maintenance infrastructure, and operating concepts to mature alongside hardware deliveries. Operationally, the Victory class reflects a sober reading of Singapore's strategic environment. The city-state sits astride some of the busiest shipping routes on Earth, where the need for routine policing and deterrence coexists with the risk of sudden escalation. A large navy is not an option, a smart navy is essential. By combining a capable crewed combatant with modular unmanned teams, the MRCV aims to cover more water, detect threats earlier, and respond with precision, whether the task is tracking suspicious traffic, hunting mines, shadowing submarines, or providing standoff fires in a high-end fight. The platform is designed to pivot from constabulary work to intense combat operations without changing ships, only the mix of payloads and vehicles embarked. Leadership at ST Engineering has framed the launch as proof of an unusually tight collaboration between the shipbuilder, the Navy, and the Defense Science and Technology Agency. Rather than treating the first hull as a one-off prototype, 
the partners have used a model-based process to lock down standards that can be reproduced across the class. That matters for availability and lifecycle cost, common layouts, harmonized cable runs, and standardized interfaces simplify training, spare parts, and upgrades. It also matters for the long game of software-centric warfare. A consistent backbone make it easier to roll in new automation, improved autonomy for unmanned platforms, and next-generation effectors as they become viable. The ship size and systems are only part of the story. The MRCV concept is fundamentally about orchestrating a team. Unmanned aerial vehicles extend the sensor horizon and provide rapid tasking over wide areas. Unmanned surface craft can patrol for hours, escort high-value units, or conduct electronic warfare from positions that would be risky for manned ships. Below the waves, autonomous vehicles can map routes, conduct mine reconnaissance, and quietly monitor choke points. The mothership fuses the data, assigns tasks, and concentrates effects when needed, acting as the secure, survivable node at the center of a flexible web. The environmental and cost angles are not trivial either. Virtual prototyping and reduced rework translate into less scrap and a smaller materials footprint during construction, while predictive maintenance tools are designed to catch issues before they cascade into expensive downtime. Over decades of service, savings in time and parts add up, making the program more sustainable for a country that prizes fiscal discipline in defense as much as it does capability. These efficiencies, in turn, create headroom for the Navy to invest in new payloads and autonomy upgrades that will keep the class relevant against evolving threats. Symbolism aside, launching victory on Trafalgar Day serves as a quiet reminder that naval power has always been about integration, of tactics, technology, and industry. Where wooden hulls once relied on seamanship and gunnery, modern fleets rely on networks, software, and modularity. Singapore's first MRCV is built to be more operating system than static asset, a platform meant to update in stride with its unmanned companions and the data streams they generate. If the remaining five hulls arrive on schedule and the integration proves as seamless as the blueprint suggests, the Victory class could become a reference architecture for small, sophisticated navies seeking to do more with fewer people and fewer hulls. For the RSN, the next steps are pragmatic wire the ship, test relentlessly, train crews for manned-unmanned teaming, and validate procedures at sea. Those tasks are not headline grabbers, but they are where programs succeed or fail. The move to Ghoul Yard and the progression through integration and trials will reveal how well the digital promise translates into operational reality. By the time deliveries begin from 2028, the aim is to feel the class that arrives mature, with playbooks rehearsed and supply chains ready, so that the fleet can slot each new hull into service without a long shakedown in the limelight. The launch of Victory is therefore both an event and a milestone on a longer road. It demonstrates that Singapore's shipbuilding enterprise can deliver a first-of-class combatant shaped by digital tools and smart yard investments, and it signals where the Navy is headed, toward a future in which crewed warships manage families of autonomous systems, projecting awareness and power across domains with agility out of proportion to their numbers. In an era defined by contested commons and rapid technological churn, that is a pragmatic formula for a small state with big responsibilities at sea.